Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am Courtney Anderson and the host of the program. This is the 187th. 187. Uh, the 187th episode of this show. Woo! And this is one of the shows that is part of our Joyful Art of Business. Mm, Joyful Art of Business series. This is a series where we are focusing on practicing the Joyful Art of Business, which is that whatever we, we do, we just generically call that our business. I don't care if it's paid or not paid or full-time or part-time. None of that matters. We're just calling it business. That whatever it is that we do, uh, we bring something that's uniquely us to those actions. We call that art, right? It's art. It's how we interpret. It's how we do whatever it is we do. And the concept here is that we want to make sure that part of what we are doing, really at all times, is using the metric of our emotional and psychological uh, response as a priority in assessing whether or not we should continue on the same uh, behavior path. In other words, how do you feel? If you're doing something and, and you get huge rewards, people say, that was wonderful, you're so good at this, and they promote you or they come to your business, uh, and, and you say, but you know, I feel horrible, I really kind of hate it. You know, I'm tired of it, or I'm bored, or I have a headache, or I can't sleep, or my stomach aches, or every time I have to go do it, I, I throw up, uh, I'm, you know, then it doesn't matter what I, other people you know, does it, all these other measurements, right? Well, how much money did you make? What kind of uh, prestige did you uh, accumulate? None of that matters if you're miserable or unhappy or bored or lonely. Stop doing it at some point. Don't just quit today and then destroy, you know, relationships you built, but make a plan to exit or transition. And what I'm arguing with the joyful art, practicing joyful art of business is business, ideally, it should be a positive in your life. If it's negative, then we're not utilizing the tool of whatever work that we're, our endeavors, we're not using it effectively. And how you feel is really important. And I mean really important. Uh, we, uh, so that's why we have Joyful Order Business. What are, what's the specific show today? Within that concept, right? What are we talking about specifically today? Well, <laughs> I think this is an intriguing show for episode 187. Uh, the specific episode today is... The real reason you can't have it all is the real reason you can't have it all is that's the title. So in one way, it's sort of a, you know, a cliffhanger. What is it? Right. (laughs) Uh, So uh, but part of that, of course, is is you know, creating these things, right? They're, they're, they're lures, right? They're marketing, trying to get, encourage people to come be part of our community. Uh, the other reality though, is that's actually the question. That's actually what we're talking about today. You know, what is the real reason? And like I said, I find this to be really, really interesting because there's so much, uh, media coverage and discussion about this whole concept of it all. And it often, uh, relates to, uh, one of the gender, uh, categories, so specifically females, right? Women, women can't have it all. And there's tons of ongoing discussion about this. And there has been for the majority of, you know, my adult life, uh, this whole idea of, okay, so someone's a, a female, uh, you know, can they have it all? What is it all? And my sort of understanding is that that it all for, for females is that you're going to have the ability to express yourself through your work, again, whether it's paid or volunteer or full-time or part-time, that's irrelevant, but that you're going to have that. But you're also going to have this other ability to uh, express yourself and uh, enjoy um, some of the things that only females uh, are sort of biologically do, right? So, so mothering and nurturing and those types of things. And this idea that you can have uh, your work and have what we traditionally or stereotypically are identified as sort of female domains and activities, right? Um, You know, again, um, uh, giving birth to children, nurturing children, raising children, um, nurturing a a family, so parents, uh, aunts and uncles, siblings, spouse. And so that's sort of my big picture understanding is that it all is that you would do these sort of external work things and you would have these things that are focused on on your your family unit 
and that it all would be that you you're doing all of this and you're doing it simultaneously which would you know that's really amazing because that's a lot in there in that discussion and so there's all these like i said it's in the media constantly uh and they're always going to be you know new books and new stories and 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 some people argue of course you can have quote it all uh and in fact there's it just came just came to me I remember there was a marketing campaign. You mentioned the marketing in the, in the show episode title, right? But there was a marketing campaign. This is a, this was decades ago, so I, you know, but it was. I think it did a good job, and this is from memory. So I was a kid. I'm a little kid. I'm not an adult, you know, female. I'm not even able to work because I'm a little kid. But they had a a commercial, and a, a, and it was like it was a female in the advertising, and it was like the female can can do it all, right? The female can go to work. And come home and, and cook the bacon, you know, and fry it up in a pan. And it was showing. Look at that female. She's like in a work outfit where she went out to some sort of, you know, external, extra, uh, external family work. So she's like like in a suit or some sort of work thing. She, you know, she's doing it all. You know, she's she's bringing home the bacon, you know, which is sort of a, a, a slang meaning that she went out and she earned money to be able to then take the money she earned and be able to go to the mar- market and buy the bacon. And then she brought it home and she fried it up in the pan, you know, look at her, you know, so she's, she's outside in this, in this world of work where she's capable enough and successful enough to be able to be hired and retained and paid wages, takes the wages, buys things, and then comes home. And then there she is taking care of that family. She's, she's cooking, she's nurturing, she's preparing their food, she's serving their food. I guess she's cleaning for them. Uh, look at that. See, she's doing it all. She's, she's doing it and it was a marketing piece now again this is from memory and from decades a long time ago so if i i'd have to rewatch that ad to see exactly what it but that's my memory of it right and, and it was a powerful memory if it stuck with me all this time this idea that a female's doing all this look at her you know she's she's out in the world uh you know outside of her family doing all this stuff and then she's inside of her family and she's doing all that stuff there too she's cooking and cleaning and and preparing and and, and nurturing and everything and she's just amazing right so that sort of is my big picture idea of having it all. And like I said, this continues to come up. And some people make the argument that, of course, you, you should be able to do all of that, right? So you should be able to have, you know, whatever skills and, and, and education or training or competency and then be out external to your family doing whatever it is you do, volunteer or paid work, uh, and, and succeeding at the highest levels that you've set for yourself. And then be be in your, your home family environment and you're taking care of your, again, your parents and your siblings and your children and your uh, nieces and nephews and you're cooking and you're cleaning and you're dressing and you're bathing and you're washing and you're, I mean, look at that, you know, and your spouse and you look at, you're just, you're awesome. You're doing all that stuff. And so again, so there continues to be part of the argument and discussion. People are saying, well, of course you can. And then there's other people and, and, and tell you how, right? So often it'll be very powerful women who've accomplished uh, things of note in, in their profession who will put out uh, resources and programs and books and talk about how they do that uh, and 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 sort of tell you and because of course the, the primary question that I think we all think when we when we look at that narrative is is we think you know there's only 24 hours in a day right I mean we you know that we we mark we've marked uh, that there's 24 hours in a day and so how do you get all that extra how do you get all that stuff done you know how do you you know because you have to do basic stuff like you have to sleep and then you have to you know groom yourself and then you have to eat yourself and then you have to you know brush your own teeth and all of that and then you have to if you're going to add in taking care of other humans right so little you know a baby and a you know and children and and you're like i said anybody else you know um your parents so taking care of yourself and taking care of other people all of their issues and making their they're sleeping and that they're comfortable and that they're fed and that they're uh, hygiene and bathing and all of that and then um and then you're also able to go out external to that family unit and do you know whatever your work is for however many you know hours that takes it's just amazing in terms of i think the main thing is just the time like how do you do all of this because all of these themselves are individual full full life you know endeavors so like i said typically this is this is female focused because typically the stereotype with the male is that the male is doing you know the thing where they're taking you know their own sleep their own hygiene and you know and they're eating and bathing and cleaning themselves and then they're and then they're preparing themselves you know by dressing and everything uh and then they're out and then they you know they transport themselves to wherever you know whatever work they're doing and they do their work and then they you know and that takes you know all day or whatever their full shift is. So it takes, you know, eight hours or nine hours. And then they come back to their family unit where they live and um, they're not 
going to come to that family unit where they just were somewhere else for eight or nine hours, you know, plus if they had, you know, uh, commuting and transport time, they're not going to come back to the place where they live and then say, oh, okay, well, now I'm going to go spend a couple of more hours and I'm going to clean this place and then I'm going to bathe the other, you know, humans that are here and I'm going to feed them and I'm going to dress them and I'm going to, uh, you know, take care of that. They don't, they don't do that. So the male traditionally goes out and spends, you know, their, their time on these, their, their work. And then when they come back to their, their family unit, then they are just going to, you know, sort of, uh, do more grooming, right. Uh, and, and relax a little bit, uh, sort of, you know, uh, decompress for all the stuff they were dealing with all day out with and about in the world, you know, with other people and with traffic and with whatever. So you weren't really talking about necessarily them having it all because traditionally and stereotypically the, the male uh, has a family unit, right? There are other people there. So of course there is, and there has been uh, pervasive in many cultures, the, the male that doesn't have that family unit has in some sense failed, right? Well, where is, where is his family? Um, now it may be that he has parents many times they the parents uh, will take care of the male for uh, they'll be the one to clean the the, the family residence and, and cook and prepare their clothes and everything uh, there may be often the mother would do that um, and at some point the age is different different cultures but at some point then they're expected to bring on you know a new person uh, their spouse to do a lot of this so that's the person who went out you know because somebody anywhere that there's a physical space there's there's going to be maintenance you know so you got to clean it and you got to monitor it because stuff breaks and you got to make sure that stuff is running you know like the stove and the water and the utilities and then you got to bring things into that physical space that's the going out and you know buying the food and the clothes and all the you know there's work just any physical space and now at at a physical office building you have maintenance people who are staffed to do just this you know, make sure stuff's running, make sure that the elevator is not broken, you know, make sure that the water is flowing, that everything's working like supposed to. There, that's a job, just maintaining a physical space. So it makes sense that traditionally if the male went out and, you know, did all this stuff out external, that they didn't at the same time simultaneously have the ability to monitor what was happening in the physical space of the family unit residence because they're not even there. Like somebody else would have to do that, right? So it makes, you can sort of see when you start to add all these jobs into one into one person that it 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 does seem like that's a lot of work for one person right to add you know sort of physical maintenance um you know materials procurement right that's what you're doing you're you know you do we have enough food you you can't go cook meals without stuff to cook so somebody has to procure that and then plan ahead how much and then when are you going to start preparing it because you want to be able to serve it when it when it tastes good so you know there's there's a there's too much time into this and you have to have the utensils to be able to do it. I mean, there's there's work, right, that goes in all of this. And again, when we think about a business, when you think a lot of businesses have on-site food, you know, uh, options, a cafeteria and things like that. There are people, and that's their full-time job. It's not like one person, you're going to go do maintenance and you're going to do the cooking. No. People are brought in whose specialty is this. You know, what type of food? Where do, how do you store it? Do you refrigerate it? Can you, do you not refrigerate it? Uh, what, how, what's the shelf life? How quickly do you need to use it? How much of it goes into the ingredients for preparing this? And how many servings can you make? Like, there's, this is a whole job. This is all profession, right? So when you take all these different, you know, sort of disparate things and you say, hey, one person is going to do all of this, then you start to see why when you ask this question, traditionally only for females, can you go out and do what the male traditionally was doing externally, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm commuting and then I'm doing all of my work and activities there. And then at the same time, I'm, I'm doing maintenance, I'm doing materials planning, uh, resource management, uh, food preparation, uh, and all this kind of stuff. It, 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 it just seems that the time isn't going to avail you the opportunity to do that because you can't be physically in two places at once when, you know, doing all this stuff at the same time. And there's so much. I mean, I've taken some really interesting classes uh, just sort of on my own, and then also as part of some of my ongoing, <laughs> lifelong devotion education, looking at, uh, you know, everything from anthropological uh, uh, perspective, you know, hunter-gatherers in different societies over time, uh, uh, to how these roles have been divided and how things have been shared, um, to, you know, uh, psychology and, uh, you know, uh, political classes. A lot of this is, is, is politically determined in societies it's all fascinating but it, the, i think the interesting question that the show asks is well how do you sort of combine multiple things that were that were multiple jobs 
uh, into one person? And can that person, who's typically a female, um, do all of this? And so, like I said, there's an ongoing de discussion and debate and, and coverage about the question. And, and typically, when you have somebody who talks about it who says, you can do it, they're usually a female saying, I do it. You know, I run this big business or I'm a big success in my career. Uh, and I also do all these wonderful things in my family. Often, the way that they do that is because they are able to bring in extra labor sources to handle the things that they themselves you can't be in two places so they so they're managing all those projects but they're having other people actually uh, carry out some of the actual um you know labor requirements so if i hire someone to clean my physical space if i hire someone to go maintain maintain it maintain the the, the utilities make sure the plumbing's working you know then then yeah, those things are being done, and I am managing them. But I'm physically myself not dealing with the plug, you know, with a with a clogged uh, drain because I hired someone else to do it. Now I do have to hire and, and monitor and pay and all of that. But but if I myself had to stop whatever I was doing and then physically drive to wherever the the drain is at, in my family unit residence and then like fix it myself, then I'm not going to be able to do that and be doing this other business activity. I mean, there's you know, so usually when people say they do it all, what they mean is they just go hire. And they have the resources to hire people to then to do this other stuff. And then they monitor those people. So they are still doing, I mean, there's still, it's extra management, right? Because I'm dealing with these things at my office for my, my business or my job, but I'm also still monitoring and checking my, you know, my smartphone or my email. What's the status with the plumber? What's the status with the people that were going to come maintain, maintain my, my garden or my yard? What's the status with the people that are going to clean my, my residence, right? So you're still monitoring. It's extra work. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying that, but that's what they're doing. They're just finding a way. It's like you grow any any business. At a certain level, you have to hire more employees or you've got to bring in more staff, whether they're independent contractors or vendors or whatever, because you can only do so much. And it's the same thing with this having it all, right? But that doesn't still get to the question which the show posed, right? The real reason you can't have it all is you don't want it all. Yeah, the real reason that you can't have it all is because you don't want it. You don't want it all. And I, and this is, a, I, I, I would think it's, I would, I would, to me this isn't controversial, but it may, I don't know. People get controversial over anything. My argument is this. It, look, even when you have somebody who is um, what they call stay at home, what that means is they're managing, and, and we talk about in, my, in the Managing Magician series, we talk about uh, constantly with leadership. I use a ton of examples from people who manage families because it's the same thing. Management's management. Whether you're managing you know, a family or you're managing a multinational you know, corporation, it's, to me, it's basically the fundamentals of it are the same. So even if you had somebody who you know, was a stay-at-home manager or managed a family in the family residence, they themselves typically will often not want to do all of it. They'll still probably, in many instances, if they have the resources, now this is assuming they have the resources, what are the resources? Time and money are the two biggest ones. But you're still often going to have people who are managing stay at home, and they're still hiring the plumber for a couple of reasons. One, if this is not your training, if you're not a, you know, a licensed and trained certified plumber, you only are going to know so much about how to fix drains and, and plugs and things like that. So it may be that the problem has exceeded your limited knowledge. Right, you you bought some product from the store and it said it would dissolve, you know, something that was clogging the drain. You poured it in there and it still is clogged. So beyond that, what do you do, right? So it's not the only people who traditionally were, you know, outside of the family unit, you know, like I said earlier, who hire other resources, they'll hire the plumber to do it. People who were managing just the family unit themselves hire plumbers because again, there's stuff that exceeds our knowledge base. I just don't know how to do this. So I'm still going to hire people if I can. This is just, again, I'm speaking to the audience that has resources. So I get that, right? The other thing is there's stuff I just don't want to do. So maybe it's something where I think, you know what? I actually might know how to fix the toilet, uh, but I don't really want to do it. And, and so if I have the resources, I'm going to hire somebody else to do this. And, and my, my point of saying the real reason you can't have it all is you don't want it all is that even when somebody, again, is that stay at home, they're focusing on just that one uh, family unit residence, they still themselves don't want to do everything there. And they're often, when they have the resources, going to still hire out someone else to do a lot of it. A, because it doesn't, you know, their knowledge, they don't know how to do it. And the other thing is they don't want to do it. They may think, you know what, I think I might know how to fix that toilet, but I really don't want to deal with that. I'm going to I'm gonna get the person who's the plumber, have them deal with the toilet. They may be saying, you know what, I understand, you know, how to install, uh, you know, something 
in the ceiling in my family residence, but I really am not an electrician and I'm, you know what, I'm going to hire someone to do that. So that is not something that usually is controversial, right? If somebody has the resources, right? So again, if they don't have the resources and they go out and they commit a crime to get the money to hire the plumber, then yeah, you got a problem. But I'm not, we're not, I wasn't talking about that example. I'm saying they have, you know, they've legitimately legally earned the resources and they say, you know what, I am here. I'm managing my family unit residence. This is my, this is, this is all, this is all I'm doing. I'm not going external, do anything else and interact in another uh, leadership management role, but I'm still going to hire an electrician. I'm still going to hire a plumber. I'm still going to hire somebody who either has more knowledge and or I just don't want to do all of this. So part of this is is my is what I'm making the argument that you don't the reason you can't have all of it is cuz you don't even want all of it. And this sort of um fantasy I think that we have that people oh no they wanted that. They wanted to do the plumbing and the you know the repairs and the painting uh, and the cleaning and the cooking. If you've ever been fortunate enough in your life to go to a, like a, some incredibly talented uh, uh, chef's restaurant, and I've been on on a few occasions more fortunate than I could ever imagine to eat at some of the finest places uh, that you can imagine, with some of the most talented, uh, you know, renowned uh, chefs available. And part of it is I, you know, I, I I'm based in, in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is one of the international destinations for uh, for entertainment and also for fine dining. I mean, this is some of the finest dining in the world here. So if you've been a, f- a fine dining uh, renowned chef, and it could be, that, I'm using, those are some global examples, and, but they're also in any part, everywhere you go in the world, there's, there's a, even usually a low cost, well-known local place that it, the food is just amazing, right? So it's not going to be super expensive or whatever, but it's just everybody knows and they'll tell you this is the best place to get whatever that, that meal is. When you go eat that food, you'll you can yes, you get it. You understand. Yeah, now I know why everybody comes here. This is the best. This is this is it. This is the best hot dog I've had. This is the best uh, you know, baklava I've had. This is the be- I don't care. This is the best, right? And so what I'm arguing is that just because you had people who were at homes and 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 when we talk historically, of course, in many parts of the world, uh females uh weren't permitted to go outside and, and have jobs. So part of the reason why we, we, we talked about how it was one gender was because it was, it was, it was, it was prohibited for people in, in that other, in, 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 in that gender group to go out and get the job because they weren't allowed to, they weren't hired. It was against, it was either illegal to do so or the custom and practice you just didn't happen. So my point is this, if you've eaten, you know, famous, food, right? I don't care if it's a local restaurant, it's low cost, but it's the best. And everybody's like, Ooh, you got to have that. That's the best food, you know, uh, or it's a, you know, fancy, expensive place. It's the same concept that you eat it and you understand why that place is so, you know, uh, well known for being so, so awesome. Cause it is not everybody who cooks a meal cooks it the same way. That's why you have these differences. And the argument that every single female who was managing a, a, a home family residence with some kind of, you know, fantastic chef and wanted to do that is, is, is it has to be, just in terms of the numbers, it ha- it's illogical. I can't believe that every single female that managed homes, um, especially during times where that was all they were allowed to do, that they all were the most brilliant chefs ever. Now, it might be because that's all they were allowed to do in terms of they didn't have other opportunities to go outside and do other, you know, work, um, that many of them just said, well, I'll make the best of it. But I sincerely doubt that they all loved it. And in fact, I, in, <laughs> on my own social time recently, I was watching the internationally, uh, it's a British show, but in the, in the States, they, they run it behind. And I just started seeing this. And it was, it's a show, uh, Downton Abbey, right? So it's a show about, you know, it's, it's a pretend, you know, fiction show, but it's a show sort of loosely portraying very wealthy, very wealthy people in, in, uh, in England uh, about a century or so ago. And the very wealthy people, even the females, now they, of course, aren't, aren't permitted uh, to go out and have, you know, careers of their own, but they weren't cooking. They hired entirely uh, separate staffs to cook. And they even had a part in one of the episodes I was watching where one of the very wealthy uh, members of the family who doesn't even go literally downstairs in her own house, right? These are mansions are huge, but it's, it's like, it's not what you do. So even though she's a female, she didn't cook at all. She didn't even know how to. And there was one of the episodes where she was, you know, sort of circumstances led to being late in the evening and she was on her own sort of in the kitchen um, 
and making some very small dish to eat for herself and a friend. And it was sort of this, uh, you know, shocking, amazing thing because how, you know, someone of her social class wouldn't be doing that. And then they had another a show and that where this, her sister, of course, in the same social class uh, was in the kitchen, you know, wanting to learn some things. And so everyone's sort of like shocked, like what's going on. Right. The thing is that just cause you're a female doesn't mean you're an amazing chef. That's my point. And my point is that the argument that, that, well, if somebody's managing, you know, just a family residence, that they're going to be brilliant and want to do all of it. You know, the physical maintenance, the utility maintenance, the painting and repair maintenance, and the cooking and the planning and the cleaning and, uh, the, you know, the ironing. and all. It, it, My argument is that they don't want to do all of that. Now, if somebody had to do that because they didn't have the resources for anybody else to do it, I'll get it. Of course, you do what you have to do. Uh, it didn't mean that they wanted to do it. And as we open up more opportunity to have these choices, and we talk about choices constantly, then my point is you don't even want to do all of that. So this ongoing discussion about having it all, in my mind, is just it's, it's not even really logical. You don't want to do it all. You wouldn't even want to with then just the sphere of being a management of a family residence unit want to do all of it because there's a lot of different parts to it. There's a cleaning part, which is different from a cooking part, which is different from a purchasing and, and planning part, which is different from the physical maintenance part. These are all different things. Now, can you manage all of that and go out and get people who are more knowledgeable, plumbers or electricians or whatever? Yeah. But this point, that, that this myth, this pretend argument that you want to run around and do all of this at some super awesome level um, is, isn't true. And we see that in businesses. That's why they all are different jobs in a business, right? So somebody who's a, the chef in the business isn't the same person who's the marketing person. It's not the same person who's the material uh, manager because they're all different jobs. And is it possible that somebody's a, a brilliant electrician and is also a brilliant chef? Yes, I'm sure. Is that the norm? No. Does, does it mean because you're a brilliant electrician that you're automatically a brilliant chef? No. And so part of what I'm saying is these are all different types of skills and different types of interests and different types of work. And although we might have them in a sphere outside of the home or in a sphere inside the home, that the argument that you would make that somebody wants to do all of that is just, it's not, it's not logical at all. So part of why that you can't have it all is because you don't even want it all. I'm also going to add this. In the show notes, I put the first reason you don't have it all is because you don't want it all. But the second reason you don't have it all is that it all doesn't exist. And part of that is because, like, I just went through making my argument. Just because you have a, a limited knowledge of, you know, you can you can know a little bit about cooking or, you know, a little bit about plumbing. doesn't make you an expert. And the truth is that there's – are there people who have – incredibly diverse amounts of skill and knowledge and they, they are they're brilliant electrician the award-winning chef the brilliant you know they, you know the brilliant you know gardener yeah does that happen uh, often no because there's such different skills and there's a only so much time in in life and b most people don't have that many interests that they're going to invest that much energy equally or somewhat reasonably equal into all these disparate and different things it doesn't happen so you don't you don't want it all and it all doesn't even exist but I did put this in the show note because there's my personal interpretation of, I think, what this whole discussion is about. What you really want is for other people to think that you have it all. Now, why do you want that? So here's what I'm saying. A, you don't want it all. You don't want to go and learn how to be the greatest chef in the history of the universe and be the finest expert on cleaning uh, materials uh, and be the finest expert on uh, gardening and be the best expert on you know plumbing. You don't want to do all that, A. B, uh, it, it all doesn't even exist. And we know from just the history of humans that if – you know, if someone's brilliant at one thing, wow, that's the greatest painter. He's so great at painting. Does that mean he's going to be a great cook? No. We know this. So this idea that it all exists doesn't make any sense. What I do believe, though, is what people really want is for other people to think they have it all. Most specifically, this is a female-to-female issue. Usually somebody who's not even thinking about having it all, and it's usually men for the reasons we talked about historically, they think, well, I'm going to go work. Work really hard and be great at that. And, you know, and I'll, I'll have a family. Like I said, there is a threshold. Where the expectation is, you know, well, where's your family? Like, who's taking care of it? Because part of it is the idea that we realize that, and it's and it's and it's again a stereotype, and it's and it's and it's inaccurate. But the stereotype is, you know, that a guy, a man, a male, 
the bachelor by himself that it's gonna you know the house won't be kept physically the right way and the meals won't be prepared correctly and you know that he'll just sort of bumble around goofy and unable to take care of himself because he needs somebody to take care of him right to cook and clean and tell him what to eat and tell him when to eat and tell him what to wear and help him prepare his clothes and how to brush his teeth and all this kind of stuff and I, of course it's offensive and absolutely um i think uh, inappropriate but that myth is out there so there is a threshold for males too that they're that that it's sort of whoa well, who's taking care of all of this, right? And, and the idea of a guy's doing it is temporary. It's temporary. Maybe, maybe he had someone who was doing it, and maybe they they you know um, moved away and lived somewhere else, or something happened to them, or they passed away. And so, until he can find a new person to come in and do all these things for him, um, he might be on his own temporarily. But that's not really what he's going to do. And that's just again, it's offensive and disrespectful, and it's a stereotype and it's ridiculous. But it's it, it, it exists. So there is something for for all. Uh, gender groups to to share in this for females though this high idea of having it all is usually female to female and my interpretation of it is is that as the opportunities have opened up so before like we said the reason why people typically would say wow you know my, my female my family was so good at all of this part of it was because it's all they were allowed to do and since that's all you can do and you have three choices you know then usually you're going to learn how to do those three things relatively competently because there's nothing else that you can do As you've opened up opportunity, then some people have said, oh, okay, I still want to stay in the area of managing my family residence unit, right? We call that the the stay-at-home person. And some people do that uh, as with with children, with with minor children in a family. Some people do that without minor children, and there's a whole stereotype about that. People say, well, how are you stay-at-home and you don't have any children? There was not a rule that said you had to be stay-at-home manager and have minor children. That just happened more often than not. But that doesn't mean that's required. So some people still, that's what they like to do. And as the choice is opened up, what choice means is exactly that, choice. I choose. What do I want? So if I like uh, being in my family unit and making sure the plumbing's working, making sure there's enough food and materials, making sure that, the, you know, that whoever else lives there, even if it's just me, uh, are, are taken care of in terms of hygiene and, and, and uh, uh, you know, aesthetics, then I'm going to do that. If my choice is that I want to go and be part of my work endeavors and external to my family unit and be, you know, employed at a, at a, at a, at an organization, you know, and I want to do marketing, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a chef, I want to whatever, like that's a choice. And I think as it's happened, what, what, what's, what's happened within, within the gender group where people didn't have as many options previously is that it's the same it's it's similar to what we talked about with the male gender right that you know what's wrong with you why why don't you have someone take care of you right with the female the idea is okay well maybe you can go out and work externally to your family unit but you, you need to have a family unit too right you need to show that this because as a female that's part of what you defines you right that females um are biologically able in many instances uh to become pregnant and to carry children to term and all of this now we've known since the beginning of um our understanding of our species that not all females uh their individual bodies permit them to become pregnant and carry children to term we know this unfortunately there wasn't sort of room for that diversity of individual experience when we had sort of these more rigidly limited choices and so people who might have been uh who said, well, okay, I'm at home, but I, I, I'm not able to, 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 uh, my body is not, uh, one that permits me to become pregnant and carry children to term. Uh, so thus I'm not able to do that. It, it was those groups, those people were just sort of very negatively, uh, perceived in society. So as we've opened up opportunities, one, not everybody's able to have, uh, children. Two, and again, I'm going to say it, not everybody wants that. Some people want children and not a spouse. Yes. Some people want a spouse and not children. Some people don't want a spouse or children. And so, again, my understanding of this idea, the real reason you can't have it all is, A, you don't want it all, and B, it doesn't even exist. That you're going to be able to do all this stuff in 24 hours a day and do it at some elite expert level. It doesn't happen. 
Now, if you have enough resources and money, whether it's today or 100 years ago, like I shared in the little fictional TV show I was watching, or any other time to hire somebody else to do it, well, then, yeah, you, quote, have it all because somebody else is taking care of a lot of that stuff. Somebody else is cooking. Somebody else is cleaning. Somebody else is doing it. Then you have it all. But what I think in modern times, in the last couple of decades, in many parts of the world, as is, 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 is women in huge numbers have had more, more choices. They've just been allowed to go make different choices. As people do that, then you get all kind of diversity of choices. You also get it worked the other way, where men have diversity of choices. And so now you have all these really offensive uh, and disrespectful and, and absolutely inappropriate stereotypes about a male who says, you know what, I really want to be managing my family unit residence. And I don't want to be in commute and, and you know, working at that or job. I'd like to do this. I, I want to be with, with my spouse. I want to be with my children or, you know, whatever. And then people derogatory and, and, and offensive and uh, disrespectful. You know, choice is choice. Now, the beauty of this is, and when we open up choices, ideally how it should work, is then we'll be able individually to make our own decisions based on our own interests and skills and talent. And we're going to get the best we as a society. So the people who really want uh, to uh, give birth to children and adopt children and raise children, which is in, that's incredibly important and incredibly. I mean, we've done programs where we talk about, you know, the impact of the vocabulary that the adults use around their children, how that sets that child up either for an advantage or disadvantage for the rest of their lives. I mean, these are incredibly serious issues. Now, some people, of course, love these so much that they, they study and have a profession just dealing with child development and dealing with the different uh, parts of, uh, you know, the physical nutrition, uh, the uh, interaction, the, the vocabulary, the type of tone of voice that's used. I mean, there's all, you know, there are people who love every single thing that we'll discuss enough. That's their, that's their profession. And we as a society benefit when we allow people to get out there and pursue those interests and talents. And passions. And we all benefit from that expertise and knowledge. Oh, that's how, oh, I didn't even know that's what you do when you're, you know, ideally with a toddler in terms of vocabulary development. Okay, now we do. But for the people who don't want to do that, to remove from them this mandatory uh, forced option where you're going to have to do this whether you want to do it or not, we all as a society benefit. And I think the vestige of this that I see that is, quote, controversial, is typically women to women. And it's women trying to make other women feel bad about themselves by implying that the other women are less than. So it goes, and and sometimes they call these the mommy wars. Uh, That's something I've seen in pop culture. And it's it, it's and again it's illogical it's offensive it's 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 uh, destructive, but what will happen is women who maybe excel uh, outside their family residence unit, then other women will say to them, yeah, well maybe you're you know vice president of your company or you know you got a promotion or you're teacher of the year, but what about what about inside your family unit? You failed. You're a failure as a person. You're a failure as a female because I bet your family unit's failing. And if the woman says, well, you know I don't you know I don't have children or you know I do have children or I'm not, and I don't have a spouse or a life partner, I do have a spouse or a life partner, no matter what the answer is, then people will attack them and say, see, you, you didn't even have it all because you messed up. You either didn't have, an, you know, why do you only have one child? You know, or, or, or maybe you have a couple of children, but, you know, you don't spend enough time with them. Or maybe you spend a lot of time with them, but you're not doing quality time with them. Or, you know, why, what's wrong? You know, why, why, do you, why is your spouse who they are? Or whatever. Like, it never ends. And it goes the other way. So somebody who's outside, uh, external to the family residence unit, is doing whatever it is. They enjoy it, you, you assume. And then they want to sit around and be offensive and disrespectful. Oh, well, look at that person. All they're doing is staying in their family residence unit. You know, when's the last time you, uh, you know, earned a living? You know, what do you, you know, why aren't you out in an external situation doing something? And, and, and no matter what the person answers, if the person says, well, I, I was, I, you know, I had my career and I was doing things externally and then I decided I want to come home. Oh, well, now you're letting your skills uh, atrophy. You're not going to be able to get ahead. You're falling behind. Uh, or the person says, well, you know, it wasn't everything I wa- it was never anything I wanted to do. You know, I started managing my family residence unit, you know, right after I finished my primary and uh, secondary school and I'm, I'm very pleased and I'm good at what I do. Oh, you've failed to, you know, do all that you can as a person. Look at you. You know, matter, no, literally no matter what you answer as a female, if somebody's engaged in this uh, attack, right, um, you fail. So I have just, you know, in closing, what can I say other than why play this game? I, my argument is the real reason you can't have it all is A, you don't want it all, and B, it doesn't even exist. And, and 
that the reason that we even have this discussion about it all is because some people want other people to think, and these are usually females, some people want other people to think that they have it all. That whole sort of, you know, uh, peer group thing. So it's not even that they care about having it all, right? Because we talked about, there's only so many hours in a day. So what people are doing is they're, they're using resources, right? So they're, they're getting somebody else, they're hiring somebody, or they're having their friend or neighbor or sister or whoever, or, or mom or grandmother come over and take care of their kids. So yeah, they're quote able to do it, but that's because they have that extra resource. And when you get into this discussion and it becomes just insults and, 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 uh, you know, being derogatory to other people and insulting them. Then other than this, this, this feeling of, I only feel good by making you feel bad, which is an awful way to live your life. We've talked about this in so many programs. That's what a lot of bullies do. This is a form, I believe, in some ways of bullying, um, of diminishing other people. You know what? Choice means choice. And the, the only people who have the energy to sit around and, and engage in any of this activity and discussion are people who are unhappy with their own lives. Uh, which is why we talked about, and it's one of the reasons this is a Joyful Art of Business show. It's why this is in that series. If you're going, doing your own choices and you're feeling really good about yourself, then the last thing that you do when you feel joyful is to sit around and want to be miserable because you're not miserable. So you don't, it doesn't, you're, it, logically, if you're feeling good, you're not going to sit around making other people feel bad. Now, if you're pretending that you feel good, but you really hate it, you hate being managing your family, you would rather do something else, and or you hate being uh, external uh, you know, at work or whatever, and you'd rather be doing something else, if you secretly hate it, then yeah, it makes sense that since you're miserable and unhappy, you want to spread your misery and pain with everybody else. But that, to me, is what this boils down to. So you can't have it all because, A, it does, you don't want it all, and B, it, it doesn't even exist. It all doesn't even exist. This whole discussion, my interpretation is simply that people who have had very recent opportunities to make different choices because it just started right it's it's a confusing time and there are people who've made choices or feel that choices were made for them and they're not happy they're not practicing the joyful art of business because they're miserable and when you're not happy what are you going to do you're going to spread misery and pain and when you're unhappy one of the things that drives you really um, to more anger is that you see somebody else who seems like they're happy because then you think, well, why, why did they get the happiness and I'm denied it? And then what your goal is, is to tear them down and make them unhappy because then they'll be like you and then you won't feel so bad. I mean, I've oversimplified all of this, but that's what you're dealing with. So every time you hear these discussions and all this and people are trying to put somebody else down or insult somebody or degrade them or debase them and all this, it's because they're trying to spread their own misery and pain. And, they're, and, it, and it angers them immensely that someone else may have happiness and they don't have it. Instead of thinking, oh, okay, well, what do I need to do then to, to get my own place so that I can have some happiness, enjoy my own life? They don't do that. What they do is they think it's shorter and faster for me to try and make somebody else miserable. And that's why they, and they start attacking them and all this kind of garbage. You don't have it all. Why don't you have it all? What's wrong with you? Right? Uh, this is something my, my, my fervent hope and desire is that it's just like I said, these things are, uh, you know, relatively recent in terms of time and people have to adjust to, to change and that it'll, that this will abate uh, and, and hopefully completely stop over time. Uh, and if a man wants to um, be in a, managing the residence family unit or a man wants to quote be the bachelor, you know what? He has the right. Leave him alone. The, the, the teasing and in, in, in the in, in insinuations that somebody's less than a man and this disgusting situation where someone's less than a woman uh, it's really honestly something hopefully you know we we don't mention and talk about much because it's just you know it's just abusive and derogatory um, but where it stems and where it comes from is that person who's unhappy with their own choices and then they they look around and they think oh somebody else seems happy I must take that happiness away from them so they're like me and that's what they do and the only way for us to address and answer this then is to refuse to do this. A, the whole series and this whole show is about us practicing the joyful our business so we're never in a situation where we're so miserable and mired in that that we just want to go around and destroy other people so that they're like us. So that fixed that part of the problem. The other part of the problem is um, whenever we hear someone engage in these types of discussions, we want to immediately recognize it for what it is. Uh, unhappiness and and people preying on other people's insecurities right so you know you see someone else they seem like they're happy but then if you go out there and ask the question but are you really happy have you lived up to your full potential then that person who's who's susceptible right thinks well maybe they're right maybe i maybe i'm failing myself because i didn't go out and do all the same things they did that's ridiculous 
they're a different person. If you wanted to do that, you do that. All of us look at life and realize, I'm not going to be able to go do be, learning to be the be, world the world class chef, the number one electrician, the best um, gardener, the number one landscape architect, uh, the greatest uh, you know uh, home management specialist. Uh, and nurtured uh, children through all these different types of development at, at an optimal, perfect way with all the different things, their physical, mental, psychological, verbal development, simultaneous. I mean, everybody looks at all this and says, of course not. I'm not going to ever, you never say to somebody, well, why aren't you an auto mechanic and, and at the same time an architect and at the same time, uh, you know, a specialist on, on uh, tortoises. Nobody yells at people for that. But we'd want to do the same thing with these things and, and that are just as cha- just as uniquely diverse. So as long as we're taking responsibility for our own lives and we're making choices that are fitting what we want that make us feel joyful, then that's the whole situation. What other people think of us, we talk about this in almost, you know, every setting that we can is are totally irrelevant. And yes, it makes other people just furious that we're happy in any at any time. Maybe we were only happy once out of the last three days, but the fact that we had a moment of happiness and they had none is something that just angers them immensely. And they're going to try to take that little moment away from us by, by being insulting or derogatory or these, you know, these suggestions, right, that we're not enough of uh, our gender. We're not enough of whatever. I mean, all of this is just to, to, to diminish us and to uh, take away our joy. And we're not going to let anybody do that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous that anyone would even try. Uh, so recognize these things for what they are and understand that you do have, quote, it all as you have defined it in your own life. And uh, that's all anybody can do. And and then and then accept that just like you have the right to make your choices and to pursue your joy, other people do too. And that since they're different, then we all benefit by people going out and pursuing those things that make them joyful. And we can eat their, the great food and we can have them come help us with their uh, you know, plumbing problems and we get the best instead of getting people doing things they don't want to do, um, that they don't do well, but just because they felt like they had to. So we really want to think about it a big picture and we want to put a stop in our own individual lives to these discussions. So we're not ever going to say these types of things. But when we talk to someone who has different choices than we do, we're going to learn from them. There's always something to learn from someone. Um, we're going to be grateful for the opportunity to, to know them and spend time with them. And, uh, and we're going to accept that they are different and make their choices and we're different and make our choices. But as long as they're a positive uh, person, they may be a wonderful addition to our lives. This is not a competition. It's just life. And everyone has different interests and different talents. And as long as they're meeting and exceeding their own goals, and you're meeting and exceeding your own goals, usually you make really wonderful friendships and relationships with people that you don't have a lot of maybe substantive areas in common with, but because you, but because you have these orientations to the world where you are focused on, on your own uh, positive uh, feedback, then, it, then you're really good friends. But if you're unhappy and you're pretending that you're happy and then you want to sit around and be... Um, uh, uh, and someone who attacks other people to subvert their joy. Uh, I've called uh, that what it is in this program. And uh, obviously you probably aren't on our show and our community members, but if we run into one of those people, then recognize her for what it is. And then as, uh, as they say uh, in the South, it's a colloquialism in the South part of the United States, but, you know, bless their hearts. In other words, it means, well, that's, 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 I feel sad for them. I feel sad for them that they want to go sabotage other people. And that they're so unhappy that they are pretending that they're that they're happy, and then they're trying to make other people feel bad about themselves. We want to feel sorry for them and have sympathy because that is a sad thing. And then just just dismiss it from our own uh, mental framework and continue on practicing the joyful art of business, whatever it is we're doing. You're raising your your uh, children, wonderful. You're an executive at a big company, wonderful. You're doing both, wonderful. You're you're not an executive and you don't have any children, wonderful. <laughs> you you know, I mean, honestly, whatever admit and embrace that you deserve to have a life that is more joyful than not. Not every moment is joyful, but it's more positive than negative. And then go out and pursue that. And then as you attain that, focus on sustaining it. And then spend your time with other people who've done the same thing. But all the people who are unhappy and miserable and running around worried about manipulating what you think of them and trying to make you jealous and all this silliness, recognize it for what it is, insecurity, pain, uh, the desire to take away your joy, and then just hope that they make better, better decisions in the future and that they change their own lives and then continue to be happy. 
So I've enjoyed this show. I thank you for being part of our program. I do, again, encourage you to come to CourtneyAnderson.com. You see our sponsors, our show sponsors, throughout our different website pages. Please click on those sponsor links if there's anything that you think would be good product or service for you to purchase. Also, visit our show page for this show with additional notes and links. Um, spread this show on social media. Let, let other people be part of our community and our com- conversation. And leave any ratings or reviews that you have uh, for our program that are positive and or constructive anywhere that you find our show around the world. And reach out and let me know what you think. I'm always interested in your feedback, show suggestions, and ideas. But thank you for being part of the program today.